I'm interested when you said uh, back in the 60s we're doing what, how differently we're eating and consuming foods than we did then. I mean, clearly then we didn't have as much high processed foods as we do today. What are the sort of the three or four things that are really basic that we could perhaps go, okay, you know, because change obviously has got a, you know, mm-hmm. change can only happen in incremental times. Just small changes create big change. So you can't sort of throw the baby out with the bathwater. But what are some of the things that we can do to, to try and eliminate? a lot of the processes. Well, in the begin to begin with, if you're in a crisis, you have to throw everything out and start again because you're a in a health crisis. crisis. Yeah, a health crisis. If you are in a health crisis, you have to do it. If you're not in a health crisis, but you know you've got to do- be doing better, uh, it is about changing habits. Mm-hmm. And I look at doing one a week because they're not hard. It might be as easy as changing your salt habit, going from white refined salt with potassium iodate in it, which comes into Australia with (laughs) a drum that says, do not consume. It just is beyond my comprehension that they allow this in our food. So it has potassium iodate in it, it has bleaches, it has uh, anti-caking agents. So going from that type of salt to a salt that has 75 minerals in it, that's it. It's just a salt that we've, you know, either taken from the ocean or we've taken from the Himalayas or something like that. It could be as easy as changing your sugar habit. you know, a lot of people eat man-made sugars or artificial sweeteners, but there are natural sugars out there mm-hmm. that might be a good one to do. But if I was going to give you my top three, uh, number one, I would get rid of all foods in packages. <laughs> Anything that comes in a box. Anything that comes in a box or a package or has a bunch of ingredients on it that you don't even know where they've come from. Mm-hmm. So you don't even have a relationship with where this food has come from. You actually don't even know where it's come from. So I guess that's number one. Start going into your pantry. If if people are listening now and they're at home, go into your pantry and just have a look at the ingredients on it. Don't look at the nutritional label, the fat, salt, sugar. Forget that. That's a waste of time. Look at the ingredients. And if you know where they've come from and they look like real foods, then keep it. If don't, chuck it. There's numbers attached to it and it's got some foreign language there. Yeah, exactly. Just get rid of it. So that would be number one. Number two... We have a lot of genetically modified foods, but what happened before the genetic modification of foods is we had hybridisation of foods. And what does it, that mean? Well, hybridisation means that nature does it naturally, but when man manipulates it to do it, so it might take, a, let's say, let's take wheat, because that's one of the foods that's been highly hybridised. So they may take the grain from Japan and a grain from America and one from the wilds of the Himalayas or wherever they may take it from. And they start to manipulate the hybridization process. So it's not a natural selection, it's, mm-hmm. it's man manipulating it. And in 2009, they started to use a chemical to, hip, to do this. And that's uh, now called Clearfield Wheat. And in Australia, they are not growing it. But in America, they are under a million acres. Now let's just talk about what's happening in Australia. So in Australia we grow a wheat that's been hybridised and it's called dwarf high yielding wheat. And it started about the 80s in Australia. Before that the gluten content was low, um, there were a lot of lectins that were, were easier for us to pass through our digestive system as opposed to putting it into our system and then the immune system attacking it. Right. And think about it, the 60s and 70s, nobody had a gluten intolerance. No, like everybody ate bread, everybody ate any, any of those foods. I bet everybody knows someone who can't eat gluten. And the gluten-free um, you know, industry is a billion dollar industry. So they've hybridised our wheat. Our wheat is in breakfast cereals, it's in our bread. It's, it's glucose is made out of it. Mm-hmm. So people who, who think that glucose is okay, it's actually made from genetically modified wheat or hybridised wheat. Our vitamins are made from it. So th- this even with vitamins, can you actually think that you're actually putting some good into your body? Oh no, vitamins are part of the drug industry. Like most of our vitamins are made by chemicals. Um, vitamin A is made from acetone. Vitamin D, depending on whether you do D2 or D3, could be made from lanolin, or it could be made from the, ke- uh, the petrochemical industry. B1 is made from the petrochemical industry. Vitamin C is made from genetically modified wheat. It's, it's, it's really scary. People um, are just believing that what we put on the shelves is fine. Yeah. So number two is, you know, really be careful of, of wheat. I'm sorry to say that. Be really careful of it. Uh, you know, there are other, there are old wheats out there and in Italy and France mm. and Bulgaria. They're still growing these beautiful traditional wheats such as einkorn, it's called, and emma wheat. 
Okay, so uh, number three would be to look at your fats because fats are really important in the diet. And we've been, uh, everyone believes that margarine is the right one. And if I go to the grocery store, 80% is margarine, 20% is butter. Or actually, it's probably 90-10. Mm. And if you look at the ingredients of margarine, it says it's a vegetable oil. But a vegetable oil is liquid at room temperature, not solid. So what do they do to make it solid? You have to ask that question and they could intersterify it, they could hydrogenate it or they could fractionate it. They don't tell you what they do to it. And then it doesn't taste like butter, so they have to put a flavour in it, which has 48 chemicals, oh which includes solvents and diactyls, which have been proven to cause problems in health. Then they have to put a colour in it because it's not yellow, it's black green colour. Oh God, how revolting. I know. And then they put a plant sterile in it so that they can actually claim that it will lower your cholesterol absorption. It doesn't lower your cholesterol, it lowers cholesterol absorption. So it means you're not absorbing cholesterol that the body may need, just in case the body doesn't mm. make enough. Yeah. You know? God. God. Like, so my, to me, fats are all your Real old fats. Real fats. Real fats, lard, tallow, butter, ghee, coconut oil. They're sure. my favorites yeah. for cooking, yeah. my favorites for salad dressings, pestos and um, mayonnaises mm. would be, I use Inki Inchi, which is, just one of the most beautiful oils, macadamia, olive, almond, walnut. You know, these are the beautiful oils. They haven't been genetically modified, they haven't been hybridized, and they're really important for our health. So, you know, they're my three top ones. I've got another 50 under that, but let's just start with those three. <laughs> but that's massive. I mean, they're the things that we consume um, on a greater scale more than anything, is your wheats, your sugars, and your fats. They are, they are the big three.